Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and today let's have a look at the engine failure in the Analog Baron. The Analog Baron in this case is going to be used as a representative for pretty much most multi-engine piston general aviation aircraft. And there are a couple things we need to understand here. So let's start with some basic explanations. We'll start by looking into the airspeed indicator. We have two markings on here in multi-engine piston aircraft that we don't have in the single engine aircraft or in commercial airliners. So the first one is the blue line and that is the best single engine rate of climb speed. So when we are single engine, this is our best rate of climb compared to the 115 knots that we have when we are multi-engine. The other one is the red line, and the red line in here is the minimum control speed in the air. So what does that mean? Minimum control speed on a multi-engine airplane basically is the speed at which you are able to maintain controlled straight flight with a maximum of 5 degrees of bank and full rudder with a critical engine failed. So critical engine, very quickly. Um, I'm sure that from the single engine aircraft you are aware that when your propeller is turning the airplane wants to bank in a certain direction. And that effect of course also exists on multi-engine aircraft. So depending on the direction into which the engines are turning, an engine failure on one side may have more severe consequences than an engine failure on the other side. Airplane manufacturers can mitigate against that, for example by counter-rotating propellers as the Baron has them. But in that case, we still have influences like the wind that might be pushing us off and stuff like that. So we typically have a critical engine on every single takeoff. So, um, apart from that, let's have a look into the procedure that we are going to follow. And if we look into the checklist, we have engine failure on takeoff up here. And... We need to understand that losing an engine on a multi-engine airplane does not simply cost us 50% of the thrust. Instead, we are losing more or less something in the region of around 80% of total available thrust because the life engine all of a sudden needs to drag along that big piece of engine on the other wing that just went dead that previously produced thrust but is now producing drag. So. I'm sure most of you have seen my live stream on the Baron and the first look where we could easily get rates of climb in the region of 3000 feet a minute. Well, it's going to be quite a bit less in the engine failure case. Indeed, I will be happy to get 500 feet a minute. The airplane's operational handbook even tells us 270 feet a minute at the maximum takeoff weight with a critical engine failed. So, let's have a look into the engine failure procedure. Landing gear up. Flaps retract above 85 knots, and I can't overstress the importance of this. If you have the flaps extended, you are not going to climb. You are simply not going to climb. Easy as that. Inoperative engine identify, and that can be quite a problem. You will see that in the analog Baron, with an engine failure, the engine indications are not simply going to go towards zero, as you might expect from some default Microsoft Flight Simulator aircraft. Instead, we will still get some manifold pressure and some RPM indications, simply because the engines are still windmilling. So it can be a little bit difficult, especially in a situation where you are close to the ground, to identify the dead engine. And for that reason, we have the low thrust lights on the left and on the right engines up here, which are going to illuminate and thereby clearly showing us which engine is dead. So, if we have identified the dead engine, in-up engine throttle close, in-up engine propeller feather, airspeed maintained 100 knots. Remember, that's the um, blue line that we have up there. Then, inoperative engine mixture, cutoff, inoperative engine fuel selector, off, inoperative engine boost pump, off, magnetos off, alternator off, cow flaps closed, and then check the alternator load doesn't exceed 80 amps. So that is the procedure that we have for the engine failure on takeoff. Now, there are no official memory items for this. However, if there is one thing I learned during flight school, it is that 
you should do at least the first couple of steps by memory because you just won't have the time and your airplane isn't going to climb. So let's memorize the following steps. One gear up, flaps up above 85 knots, inoperative engine identify, throttle close, propeller feather, maintain 100 knots. If we've done that, the airplane is in a condition where you can actually climb. Otherwise, the thing just isn't going to climb. All right, so that's been quite a bit of theory there. And of course, there would be a lot more to say, but let's keep it at that and let's go fly. So I'm going to arm the um, left engine failure over here and the failure is occur. I'm going to occur one to two minutes after takeoff. However, to make the app, however, to get the engine failure in the most critical moment, I'm going to kill the engine by the mixture when we actually rotate. So that's the plan for today. All right, so traffic pattern is going to be a left pattern, 2,500 feet, and we'll take the airplane right back for landing. Park and break off. Let's go ahead and have a bit of fun. Okay, so fuel pumps on, mixture full rich, let's do a couple of the anti-ices and some lights. And like that we are ready to go. Okay, so failure armed. Then it's time for takeoff. First set. Eighty knots, rotate. Engine failure. Okay, positive rate, gear up. And this is what I meant, you barely have any rate of climb available here. Doing some 400 feet a minute. Okay, so, identify the dead engine. We've got the low thrust light on the left, manifold pressure is reduced, RPMs are reduced, zero fuel flow, the dead engine is the left engine. Okay, so, memory items. Gear up, flaps up. Left engine confirmed, throttle close, left engine RPMs confirmed, close, and feather. Okay, that is the engine failure memory items complete. Let's get it up to a good altitude, and then we'll do the non-normal checklist. Got a couple of warnings here, but they're all associated. Gear up warning, of course, because the thrust lever is in idle. The left alternator warning, because the um, left alternator is, of course, dead. And the cowl flaps are associated, since we have them extended for our takeoff. Okay, so we're at a safe altitude, so I'm slightly going to reduce RPMs on the number two engine. We don't want to overstress the engine, after all. Losing the second one would be a bit more a problem here. Okay, so let's get out the checklist and do that checklist. So, landing gear up, up, flaps retracted, retracted. Inoperative engine identify, we've got the left side low thrust and we've got the associated indications on the left hand engine. So, enough engine throttle closed, left side closed. Inoperative engine propeller feather, left side feather. Airspeed, maintain 100 knots. I'm slightly above it because we heard the um, 
score warning one or two times. Then, in op engine mixture cutter, that's the left side mixture cutter. Inoperative engine fuel selector off. So that's the uh, left side confirmed. Off. Inoperative engine boost pump off. Off. Inoperative engine magnetos off. Left side confirmed. Off. Cal flaps closed. An alternator load 80 amps max. We are well below that. And engine in up alternator off, so that's left side alternator off. Okay, so alternator is just above 75. Let me turn off a couple of those lights over here. And that is better now, it's below 75. Okay, that's the engine failure on takeoff checklist complete. Alright, now that we've got the airplane under control and the engine secured, let's start to establish our way back into the traffic pattern and then return to where we just left from. We can turn in both directions. It's a myth that you, you should not turn over the dead engine. You can do that without any problems. At an altitude 2,500 feet, I'm going to keep the airspeed a little bit up higher here. And for the approach, we are going to use approach flaps only. We will not be using landing flaps. That is in order to um, have sufficient thrust available in case of go around. Okay, so if we continue that turn, we will end up in the downwind. Well, there's our airfield. Right. But on altitude 2500. And if you're looking for a good thrust setting over here with an engine failed, if you maintain 25 inches and 2500 RPMs, I found it gives you a nice 140 knots. That is a good margin from the stall speed, so that gives us a very good ability to control the airplane. Also, a quick word on how to how much rudder to use. Basically, if you apply enough rudder that you do not need the aileron in order to maintain wings level, then you are in the perfect position. You will notice that the turn coordinator is not going to be centered like this, but that actually um, is intentional. Is intentional because with so much thrust coming from only one side, if you center the turn coordinator, you would actually be in a side slip. We don't want that. Okay then, let's turn into the downwind and fly the traffic pattern to get us back towards that runway. A little bit of turbulence here that we have to fight. Welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, over there is our airfield, and the downwind is just about beyond that little village up there, so let's take the plane around the village. Of course, noise abatement wouldn't be a factor with a failed engine, but it kind of hurts my aviator's heart to fly right over a village. Okay, joining the downwinds. Our airfield is just in front of us, over here. So, in the downwind, gear down, flaps approach, and then we can increase our thrust to about 35. For the approach, I don't want to get below 100 knots, and the reason for that is it simply provides us with a nicer handling quality in case of a go-around. And as you see, with the gear down and the approach flaps extended, we need almost full thrust in order to maintain the airplane at a good speed and maintain our altitude. So that really shows you how much the um, 
yep, and flaps make for the drag, and how little excess thrust you have available in the engine. Okay, starting the left turn over there is our airfield. On the very short final, we need to keep in mind that we only have approach flaps out, so the airplane is going to flare a little bit longer. So we are going to take that into account. The runway we are landing on, however, is long enough, so that's nothing to be concerned about. By the way, if you're wondering, we are at Bayreuth Airport in uh, Germany. 500. Okay, slow turn towards the final here. The approach is uphill, so we're going to make great use of that electronic guidance down there. I'm pretty sure we have two whites. We want one white, one white, one red. Like this. Okay, getting a bit quick, let's reduce power, and we can probably go to idle already for the flare, and here we go. As I told you, quite a bit of last track available, so just put it on the ground. And now watch the left engine, as we're losing speed, the thing is eventually going to stop turning as the wind will be insufficient to uh, keep it windmilling. Here we go. Okay, so the plane is well capable of doing single engine taxi, as you are going to see in a moment. So you can actually vacate that runway and um, taxi to the nearest maintenance facility. But that's going to be it for this video. I would like to thank you very much for watching. Hope that you have learned something. And if you did, then do let me know in the comments of the video below. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, if you want to support the channel, you can do that through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below, or by becoming a channel member, which is going to give you exclusive early access to new videos before they are released for everybody else. For now, thank you very much for watching, and I'm looking forward to welcome you all again very soon.